of an artist or at least a student of my craft, the right. craft of art. Yeah. Because uh, getting back into it, I was seeing like, you know, how people react to certain types of instruction. Mm -hmm. And then I, I saw how you could kind of like ignite something in right. somebody and have them ask questions about, oh, I have, I'm, in, I'm, I'm interested in this. And it was when somebody asked me about something that I didn't know about. Right. I think that's when I probably fell back in love with art mm -hmm. as a student and as an educator because I, it forced me to go back and learn something else and sure. bring it to them. Yeah. So what, what level were you teaching? Like what age kids? High school. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I, I went to, when I became an art teacher, I taught at a school uh, called North Forest High School, northeast side of Houston. Okay. And I was the only art teacher at the school. Wow. It was, uh, they had just, this school used to be part of another district that mm -hmm. was low performing and they shut it down and jettisoned the schools into another district. So they basically, it was all the same students, but mm -hmm. all of the teachers, the whole staff there, faculty and staff, basically lost their jobs wow. and had to reapply. Because, like, it was, the, I mean, the school just wasn't being run well at all, and it was kind of mm -hmm. like the culture sure. there. And so, essentially, it was all new students, I mean, all new staff and faculty right. and staff that came there. So, the biggest thing was winning our students over. Right. So, I taught, the, I taught freshmen all the way to uh, uh, seniors. Yeah. And, uh, and this actually goes into, like, how my work progressed. Mm-hmm. From teaching all these students, I taught um, a third of the school basically within a school year of them switching each semester. I taught a third of the school, the third of the, the school's population, and my method of winning students over is just connecting with them, right, and getting to know who they are. Absolutely. And so, um, so from there, I was able to teach you know the, these these kids where you know eighty yeah. percent of them were coming into the class saying, "I don't know anything about art." Right. I can't draw. I don't even like art. Right. And so we move we move past that. Okay, yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, this No, I agree. I I teach uh high school art out in Keller. Okay. And um yeah, I mean, it's I feel like the, in the art classroom teachers are able to make relationships with students in the way you can't in other classes. Mm -hmm. I mean, because there's so much time when when you're, you know, you're working, and it's time, it's time where you can develop relationships yeah. with kids while they're working, right? You know, and and uh, try to pull it out of them. And, yeah. But um, right now, so it, at some point, you decide it's uh, it's time for an MFA. Yes. And so, so you already had it in mind that you were going to do that, right? And it was a question of where. Yeah, it was a question. It was a question of where. And when? Because I actually went earlier than I thought I was going to. I had this idea. I had this. I don't know why I gave myself that much time, but I had this. <laughs> I had this six-year plan where I was just like, I want to get all this under me. Right. It just sounded good. It was all lip service, really. Right. But uh, but yeah. So where? Uh, and, and when? So when it came to where? One of the things that I was thinking about was, and it was. I don't know. I think I was, I, I was thinking small at the time just because, I mean, I had, there, was, there was this culture of thinking that it's in my community, at least, that art isn't like a thing that can really give you the life you want. Mm. And so in my mind, I was going against that. I just I was, OK, we'll see what happens. But this is what I know I want to do. Right. Because it was just, that was just it. I was like, I, I at least need to see for myself. So I was like, I'm going to make it happen somewhere, but I want to try to find somewhere where it's accessible. So I was thinking, okay, maybe somewhere in, in Texas, mm -hmm. I think that will be a good look. it will be, you know, in-state tuition. Let's see what happens, and I hopefully I could get funded. Mm -hmm. So I applied to um, a few schools. I, I applied to UT Austin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I applied to um, TCU mm -hmm. and um, uh, U of H. 
Okay. Okay. And so I was thinking, because I was like, you know, just let me put these fillers out here and see what happens. Now, my technique was there. My writing and concept wasn't really there. Mm-hmm. Didn't really, didn't really have too much insight on that and like to know that my, my, my writing wasn't there. I was thinking that'll carry me through. Like how, how well right. I do things will carry me through. And uh, it didn't. I got waitlisted. I got waitlisted and then didn't make it. Mm-hmm. And so me being competitive, right? I was like, okay, I at least need to know like why or find out like what I next time. Cause like I was thinking like, I'm going to apply again somewhere right. else. Like it's just like, I can't go out like that. And so I set up a meeting to go to U of H and I went there to see like how much better were um, everybody. How much better was everybody else than I, than I am. Right. I need to know. So I need to know what I need to do better and like right. what it was. And so I should have done this before the application period, but I, <laughs> But I, I went and uh, I met with the head of the painting department. He walked right. me around to see the studios. And I'm thinking, like, you know, I saw some stuff. Some of it was, you know, art. It was, like, artsy. Right. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this because I, this is important. Right. But um, there were some that I, I – there were there were a couple that I was just like, you know what? Um, you know, they probably are better than me, mm-hmm. you know, visually. Right. But then there were others that were just like, how did this – How? Mm-hmm. And I realized that, um, and I, I, t- I still keep up with my mentors from undergrad. Right. Because so I kind of talked to them about it, and they were like, well, if their concept was 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 more compelling and they're able to kind of like get the, the viewer to understand what they're trying to say, that's going to get you through more than the, the guy who can paint really well but can't right. tell you what he's painting about or if he's just reproducing an right. image. And so I was like, okay. And I took that and... I, you know, I thought about like, well, what do, what do I care about? What am I making work about? Right. And what would I like to continue? Like, what work would I like to continue? And uh, so I, I, I dove in, into that, uh, my, that way of thinking. And my uncle went to undergrad at UTA. Okay. My uncle's uh, Royce West, Senator Royce West. Oh, wow. And so uh, he was like, you should look at UTA and just kind of see what their art program is doing. Like, I went there as a good school. You know, right. Granted, he went there and, and studied, you know, political science and moved on, but mm-hmm. just, just check it out. And so I went, and as I went to uh, see just what the program was like. Right. And I went through there, and as every person I met, and I was telling them, well, I'm, I, I paint and I draw, blah, 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 I use the human figure, and I talk about this. Everybody kept saying, you should meet Cedric. Right. Yeah, right he wasn't on. there that day. But they were like, "You should meet Cedric," and I was like, <laughs> "Okay, who's this Cedric?" Yeah, I was like, "Who who's that?" <laughs> and so, uh, and I mean, like, they were like, "Oh, it sucks." So they would introduce me to somebody else and tell them that they were like, "Have you met Cedric?" I didn't put two and two together right. when, when that kept happening. But the next day, I, I researched it. Uh-huh. I got I got back to Houston. I researched, it, and I was like, "Oh, like, this, I really want to meet this guy." Right. And uh, the next day, he called me. They had him call me, and we right. talked for like an hour and a half, two hours. Right. And after that, I I, I knew my where. Mm-hmm. I knew it. I knew where, and that was the only place I, I UTA was the only place I applied to. Sure. That second time around. So did you get to work with Cedric as much as you hoped you would? Oh yeah, definitely. He was my major professor. That's awesome. And so I was right under his wing. Matter of fact, a lot of my a lot of the opportunities I got just came from being around him and him telling, which is like how it is in the art world, is somebody saying, hey, you should look at their work. And then the person who can mm-hmm. make something happen, like, okay. And then right. it just happens from there. Yeah. And he did that. Oh, this is Spencer Evans. You should, you know, check him out. He's, he's right. an art student, blah, blah, blah. But <coughs> so, um, so, yeah, so the where came from just from that, from my uncle being like, you should check that out. And me going and then right. talking to Cedric learning about who he is and what everything he was doing, I was like, this is the only place I want to go because I, I value mentorship so much. Sure. To where it's like, if I go there and I can learn from this person who's doing something that I want to do at a level that I would love to do it, Right. what, what, what better opportunity would it be if this one that's right in front of me? Yeah. So um, when I look at your work, you know, I... 
I instantly kind of recognize it as being Spencer Evans. Did when you started at UTA, how much of that was already there? Oh, it was like were you already doing blue figurative work before UTA? Yeah, no. All right. I so where? I, I'm curious to hear where where that came from. Okay. So in, in grad school, you get there and. Nobody's telling you what to do. There right. are assignments of, you know, what to do. So, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd never been to grad school before. So right. I didn't know that. So I'm like, so what are you doing? And every professor that I spoke with was just like, well, make work and then we'll talk about it. Right. You know, in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Let's we'll see what you do in a couple of weeks and we talk about it. And so um, one of the things I picked up was this idea of starting within. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the work that you're trying to do, like, Start within. I spent time trying to get to know myself and becoming hypersensitive to how I felt about different things. So right. What is going on with you right now? Uh-huh. And um, one of the things that, you know, it wasn't, it certainly wasn't new to me, but it was something that was in my face a lot was the fact that I was the only um, black student and the only black grad student as a studio MFA. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of time, and even even ver first starting there, it was like you get looks sometimes, and I don't think people mean to be that way, but it was just, and like I said, it's something I'm used to, but it it was just like the look of kind of like like oh that's you know how you know I haven't seen you around here like what like how are you? Somebody even asked me if I was lost one time when I was oh, at man. my, like outside my own studio. So my, and I, she was trying to help, but she was just like, right. ah, you need help finding something. And I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm fine. And so I thought about, I thought about how um, my physical appearance mm -hmm. affects people as if it was something new that they had seen, as if like you had never seen this before. And so I was trying to, I, I did kind of like a play on that of, uh -huh. This is like a, if my skin were actually in a, a color that wasn't natural, maybe you would have a reason to act weird when you're around. You'd have a reason to, to stare. Yeah. And then um, it kind of just blossomed from there. Like I changed the, I changed the skin color of, a, of my, the figures and I went with a lot of I went with a few of them. Right. And I stuck with blue because I thought about um, associations that are there. And when you see it, it's like, OK. What does blue mean? Especially if you think about like somebody's skin being blue, like oh, there's, you know, is it that loss of circulation? Is right. it, you know, are they cold? Are they sad? Blah blah blah. And so I was like, okay, if I use this, even though they have these associations, and I put them in these different situations, in my own way, I'm changing what that color means. I'm changing mm -hmm. what the associations mm -hmm. are to that, and it was almost like a play on changing what my skin means when people see it interesting and so that that's where that came from and i just kind of uh, kept going with it it's even changed now like my, my feeling towards this blue skin has even changed now but that's where it started right uh I remember the first time i saw your work was uh, at the uta gallery and this was probably three or four years ago mm -hmm. and there was a piece uh, it was a pretty big piece but it was uh it was a male figure blue face uh, he looked like he was suffocating. I think he had his tie in his hand. Uh, yeah. And there was like uh, like a gold leaf background. Yes. And um, I love that painting. And that and I was like, man, I, I need to follow this guy. Oh, thank you. I'm glad so, you like that. Yeah. 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 And so, uh, and so I felt like there, you know, that can, you know, that whole holding your breath or out of breath. You know, there's something there that kind of pops back up yeah you know, I see it like on one of these pieces over here yes. like you know is that I mean is that associated with like an emotional state or you know yes definitely it's the emotional state and also kind of um, like the physical cost that comes from that so it's uh, and it's something that I I, I would I, I became conscious of it once I started to do this work that was mm -hmm. about like my own feelings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought about how I spend a lot of time holding certain parts of myself in, even obscuring my, myself uh, to make others comfortable. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I did it in school. Um, I did it when I met people, mm-hmm. like at, at certain events. Uh,